All right, let's go on to the very short episode seven of season four of Fargo. And despite the very short length, um, a lot happens. <laughs> so, um, like Im immediately, um, we see Jesse Buckley making those deadly macarons we were promised a few episodes ago for Dr. Harvard. And very quick, like as soon as I saw her doing that, it was like, how I say, when are we going to get to the point when they actually get delivered to him? And uh, this is all the opening scene. Um, she We kind of were hinting at that, and yes, she officially got to Dr. Harvard before Josto could. Um, now, the question is, is was he... Because so, he was extremely bloodthirsty in regards to Harvard, so it's like, is he, is he just going to be happy to hear that he's dead, or is he going to be... Is he still going to wish he had done it and be angry? But at the same time... There's an awful lot going on right now, and it doesn't seem to have crossed his mind for a while to make me wonder, are, is he deep enough in the war now that he's even going to care about Harvard anymore? Um, I'm curious to find that out. But um, I do like this opening scene with Buck, who we're still getting kind of... Her and Ethel Rita started off as like really major characters we're kind of getting less and less of as the war kind of takes over more, and I am wondering if we're going to kind of if these things are going to collide a little more or if they're going to kind of keep continuing to distance while just kind of playing small parts here and there in the little gears that are turning in the war every now and then. Um, but I do love the moment where Buckley kind of gets her her sort of Jerry Lundegaard on the phone moment when she's sort of kind of doing a couple of practice screams before she uh, does her real one, uh, to <laughs> where she has to start her reaction over again in regards to reacting to what has happened to uh, Dr. Harvard. And then, talking about the things that make Josto bloodthirsty, um, we have now, we're now at the site of Anton's body after Rabbi has killed him and taken off his satchel, and we were talking before about how Josto was really kind of calm and saying, like, you know, don't kill anybody, don't start a war, whatever you do. And then he's gotten more and more into the, you know what, just just start killing people. Um, now we're reaching more and more levels. Like, we're getting closer and closer to this war kind of reaching a bit of a, a real, real taking off point. Um, where he sees Antoon's body, and he says, kill everybody you have to. Um, and it's like, oh man, he must have really felt close to Anton to really, because the way he's looking down at the body and knowing that this is like really going off. Um, but then we realize where his anger really lies when he's walking away and they ask what's to be done with Anton, and he says, leave him for the birds. Uh, so, <laughs> so um, we see just how much, jo I mean, Josu has already been a character that was very, uh, I said, the, the way he was sort of drunk on his power kind of made him a bit, uh, there's not, there's not gonna be much, you know, empathy there or anything like that, but it's like, there was still, it was still kind of up in the air about his character when he was staying away from the, uh, the bloodlust angle that he could have been going for early on, um, but was smart enough to stay back, and now it's like, everybody's getting so heated, so angry, and thus so reckless, um, that, that this is gonna get... I mean, it's it, it. We're already kind of at that point before this episode's over, but I we're we're getting in really steep territory uh, that I am really excited to see where it goes. I am. Um, I mentioned in the last video that um, I am not Calamita's biggest fan, so um, I really would love to see him get some sort of come up and soon. And we get a little bit here where I really love this moment. Um, where he goes to the house and he's confronted by Lloyd's wife. Um, and it's this whole confrontation where we kind of see him get put in his place uh, that I've kind of been waiting for. But then we also get this moment where Josto goes way kind of off script here in regards to what he's going to tell Lloyd about what has happened to Satchel, which we know Rabbi has run off with him after he was going to be killed, but of course, um, Josto decides to improvise right in the moment and tell Loy that Satchel was killed. Um, by Calamita, no less. So, <laughs> um, this whole thing where now we have Loy at, like, his most... Because he's already had Dr. Senator gone. 
So it's he's he's already way on edge, and we've already seen that Loy is very da like he was very cool and collected, but now he's extremely dangerous. The more closer to the edge he gets. Um, and the, the whipping scene at the beginning of this episode just shows us right away, um, that, to put it mildly, Loy's not in a good place right now. <laughs> um, and then to throw this on him after the fact. Um, and then throwing in this whole sort of... I can't tell if it's a really good... This is, it's the same thing as always. I can never tell if it's a really good plan or a really bad, reckless plan. I talked about, talked about that before with Loy in the slaughterhouse, and now Josto's on the side of that. Um, where he's like, well, you know what? If you want your revenge, you know, if you're super angry, obviously, about your son being killed, your youngest son being killed, um, kill Gatano. I mean, you've got him. Go ahead. Just kill him, and then we'll be even. There you go. Uh, now, obviously, you know, solving his own problems as well. But, um... That's also a bit to like I talked about how Loy seems very all knowing. Like there's there's things about characters it seems like he just pulls knowledge of out of thin air. And like he knows everything and it almost gives him like this sort of godlike quality over people. Um this didn't necessarily take that godlike quality, I imagine. Because obviously by the end of the episode Loy has figured out that no. Nah, it's not that easy. <laughs> it's just to kind of jump the gun like way too much there. Like it was, he kind of had it in control a little bit, and then he took that extra step, and it's like, no, nope, that's that's where you fucked up. That's where you got too confident in your bullshit, and you've taken it too far now. And God knows what this is going to result in. Clearly, he builds up to the idea that he's going to be hunting for Calamita now. So the sooner that prick is dead, the better. Uh, <laughs> um. But then we reach moments that are, and not to mention, um, this is another really good episode for Rock, um, where we talked about um, a couple of episodes ago in episode five, that was like Rock's kind of peak moment up to that point, uh, where we really got to see the viciousness of Loy that was underlying, um, and now we get a much more sort of emotional side and a conflicted side. Um, to go with the brutality of his earlier scene of the whipping, so. We have this, so we have the moment when he gets this um, false information about Satchel being killed, which is obviously going to push him over the edge enough. Um, we even get like a little flashback that's taken him to a place, and then and we see him grieving with his wife. We go through the whole process. Then there's this incredible scene when he comes to the moment of the clear, like the obviously blueprinted revenge point here would be to kill Zero. Clearly. Um, so the moment where he's like standing outside the bathroom door getting ready to choke him and just contemplating it. And the way this scene builds up with that score, it's not even really a score, it's just like the sound of like a pounding or like a drumming. And the way it just builds and builds and it's... I feel like we kind of get the hint early on that He's not going to take it there because that would be... It almost feels like it'd be too easy story-wise to do that, at least something that drastic this soon, like in, like immediate retaliation like that. Because at the end of the day, regardless of how vicious he can be, Loy is still much more calculated than that, even at the emotional high point that he's at now. It's like this, if anything, showed us just how in control he actually is. Even when you just toss that little <laughs> bit of salt in the wound of the credit card billboard, where his idea has already taken off without him. It's like, just as another fuck you, but it's like the pressure being applied to Loy and the fact that he can still be calculated over bloodthirsty is is really saying really interesting things about this character, and Rock's performance has like really taken this uh, to that sweet spot of this material, that it's just right. Um, and it's like, you really have no idea what movie he's going to make next. Like, even though we know that, you know, Josso's whole, hey, why don't you kill Gatano thing, seemed very... Like, it was going to be figured out pretty fast. Um, the moment that he just kind of says that, where he's like, no, that was that was just bullshit. <laughs> um, and, and, but it's like, just when you realize that that's going to be the thing, like, that's the thing you see coming, is, oh, yeah, of course he knew that was bullshit. He's all-knowing. He throws in that extra little wrench of, why don't we let Gatano go? <laughs> 
And it's like, this is going in so many interesting directions. Um, and like I said, this is all all pointing to a giant blood. It has to be a giant bloodbath. <laughs> um, there's like so much of that tension that's going, like that whole ease that Loy has that's kind of suppressing his, you know, violent tendencies. It's like, oh, this is gonna, that's, I feel like that's the show in a nutshell. It's being pressed down and pressed down. It's a, it's surely about to blow up. Um, we've got, what, four episodes left. So, this, we're getting to the point now to where it's gonna be, I feel like if there, if there was any filler episodes, we've passed them. Um, which is probably like, I don't know, maybe the last episode, or maybe like episode Four, three or four. I'm, I'm kind of lost track, but um, I feel like we've kind of passed our filler episodes we'd have to, because I feel like at this point, um, it's all going to be something significant. It has to. Um, and there's, But there's still stuff that's sort of there off to the side that I'm still not sure what it is we're dealing with. Like the whole, like that whole horror aspect we're going for, whatever that is, that dude... Um, the dude that, like, creeps around like death that's in the coffin, which is, a, which was a genuinely creepy scene, except for the fact that it felt so, it feels so weird and out of place when we keep seeing that. Like I said, the, the only thing I've still been taking away from it is he signifies death, but I find it interesting that he's always, he's always around when Ethelreda is for some reason. I don't know what that connection could possibly be, especially since we're getting less and less Ethelreda as it goes on. I don't really know. Um, but... So I'll be interested to see if that even if that even has much of I mean, like I said, clearly it's a symbolic thing of something, but what it's symbolic of still seems to be up in the air, I guess. Um, but I've missed extremely obvious things before, as we saw in the last video, so we'll see. But um, another thing we've got going on here is the Otis thing, um, where he seems to be going in some interesting directions also, because I was talking about you have... Jack Houston, who's kind of, you know, getting known, like, people know his face, probably more than his name as far as, like, regular moviegoers or viewers. Um, unlike Timothy Oliphant, who's kind of the much more recognizable name and face and has led many things before, especially in TV. Um, but Otis is the character that's, like, really going these directions, and Duffy's the one that's kind of on the side. Um, so I'm still not sure. We get this very interesting scene where Duffy pretty much just comes out and says dude, I know what's going on. So the question is, is I'm really not sure, like I said, the thing that's really, like, picking at me is the fact that Timothy Oliphant, big and recognizable as he is, and seemingly crucial as Deffy is, has a guest starring credit instead of a regular cast credit, like Jack Houston has. So if Otis is going to be significantly more important and integral to the story than... Deffy is, I'm very curious what Deffy's place is going to be from here. So, that'll be interesting to find out, and like I said, if he even lasts much longer. Because that, that guest starring credit feels like a kiss of death, as it, as it was for Dr. Senator, so I don't know. Um, but the fact, when Lloyd talks to Otis and has that last moment with him, like, you know, it's not what I'm going to do, it's what we're, we're going to do. Uh, and it's like, Otis kind of seemed like this character that was just sort of like, almost like a convenience um, where he's kind of, uh, as far as, like, the connection between them and the cops and how they can sort of get inside. Um, but it's like, what exactly it is that he can use Otis for, especially when we're getting this close to, like I said, what has to be a bloodbath, <laughs> um, we'll be very curious, so. And, um, Zolmer and Swanee keep popping back in every now and then. Um, and I feel like at some point they're going to also be, like, I'm, I'm sort of starting to get, like, Yuri and Mima vibes from Season 3, um, where they're kind of here and they just kind of cause chaos and that's their thing, um, and will ultimately meet horrific ends, I assume. Um, like, like if there's two characters I had to pinpoint right now um, that will go down in an impending bloodbath, it would have to be the two of them, surely. <laughs> Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens with all this. So there's a lot of stuff, there's still a lot of questions, um, but there's a lot of stuff that's really building us towards wherever this is going to go. Um, and it's all very exciting. So I'm, I'm honestly, like, genuinely really <laughs> excited to get to episode eight. 
um, and see how much we'll be building up and wh where exactly it's going to... Because we have four episodes. It's going to be... It's kind of hard to imagine like all four episodes would be what's really been going on here. If we're going to build up to maybe... like Usually something really significant happens the episode before the last episode. So I'm very curious about all this. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much where I stand with this, I guess. Um, so I'm still very much into the season, much more than I thought I would be, um, even despite the really appealing cast going in. But uh, yeah, so we'll see. And um, it'll be interesting to catch up on um, uh, Rabbi and Satchel. So I'm, I'm assuming we'd have to see them again, especially if that's what we talked about before is where Satchel's storyline is going, which there's... I, I feel like there's no way that's not where it's going. So... Uh, yeah, so to kind of see what that bridge might be. So, um, yeah, so until the next episode, uh, that's going to be it.